Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us take a moment at the start of this holy sacrifice of the Mass to call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that putting off our old self with all its ways, we may live as Christ did. For through the healing paschal remedies, you have conformed us to his nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen, filled with grace and power, was working great wonders and signs among the people. Certain members of the so-called synagogue of freedmen, Syrians and Alexandrians, and people from Sicily and Asia, came forward and debated with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. Then they instigated some men to say, We have heard him speaking blasphemy, blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people, the elders and the scribes, accosted him and seized him, and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They presented false witnesses who testified, This man never stops saying things against this holy place and the law, for we have heard him claim that this Jesus, the Nazarene, will destroy this place and change the customs that Moses handed down to us. All who sat in the Sanhedrin looked intently at him and saw that his face was like the face of an angel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Blessed, Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Though princes meet and talk against me, your servant meditates on your statutes. Yes, your decrees are my delight. They are my counselors. Blessed, Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. I declared my ways and you answered me. Teach me your statutes. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous deeds. Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. Remove from me the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. The way of truth I have chosen, I have set your ordinances before me. Blessed, Blessed are they who follow the law of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had fed the 5,000 men, his disciples saw him walking on the sea. The next day, the crowd that remained across the sea saw that there had been only one boat there and that Jesus had gone along with his disciples in the boat, but only his disciples had left. Other boats came from Tiberias, near the place where they had eaten the bread, when the Lord gave thanks. When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, 
Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There's two things I want to point out in these readings, the Gospel and the, and the Acts of the Apostles, uh, that aren't there ostensibly, but I think they're hidden, embedded in the story. Um, you can kind of tease out. Number one is this act of faith. I think it's a miraculous act of faith of the Apostles. Now, for them to get into that boat and go across the lake at our Lord's command, it says he made them get into the boat. Okay, in Matthew and Mark. Um, <clears throat> he made them go across to the other side from somewhere near Tiberias on the western side of the Sea of Galilee all the way over to that corner, the northeast corner of, the, of Capernaum. That's a haul. Okay, the whole Sea of Galilee is 13 miles long, 10, 8 miles wide. Okay, it says in Matthew and Mark, you know, there are many furlongs, like three or four miles out into the middle of the Sea of Galilee? Did our Lord see them with some kind of supernatural vision? Or did he see lights? Did they have lanterns hanging on their boat? Because it's the middle of the night. It's the fourth watch of the night. Now he comes across there. That's like between three and six in the morning. All right now they've been at it all night. And it's a strong wind they're up against. And I'll tell you, the wind can get to blowing in the Sea of Galilee. I mentioned couple days ago you know it can get pretty strong I've seen it with my own eyes right and uh you could have potentially 10 foot waves in the sea of galilee 10 foot that's from the trough to the peak 10 feet imagine going up and down over those now that's under real gale like conditions but whatever these conditions were they were some big waves and our lord sent them into that wind to make that journey without him. That's what's so amazing. Like, aren't they his disciples, his apostles, his inner circle? Isn't that the whole point? It is to instruct them, to form them. I mean, they're his constant companions and this is kind of a strange situation. He orders them, made them get into the boat and leave without him. And then he went up into the hills by himself and prayed after he dismissed the crowd. Right after the feeding of the 5,000. What an act of faith to me that they did this, that they obeyed the Son of Man. They believe that he is the one God sent into the world. That's the bottom line. That is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. Our Lord says to the crowd. And we see that in the apostles here. When they obey what seems to be a ludicrous order, command, especially those who are experienced watermen, Peter, James, John, Andrew, they, these guys know uh, <laughs> what's involved in getting across that lake. And they know the patterns of the wind. They are experts in these things. Um, and there are clear patterns oftentimes on the Sea of Galilee, the wind in that region. OK, it's kind of. I think uh, they must have just been shaking their heads, but they obeyed to their credit. They obeyed because they believe that he is the one God sent into the world. They believe he is the Messiah. All right. And uh, therefore, whatever he says, no matter how ludicrous, they're starting to learn that he does things outside the box. And they obey. For crying out loud, he just fed a crowd of 5,000 people with a few loaves and fish. All right. Uh, so after seeing something like that, they better obey somebody that just knew what he was going to do and gave a ludic ludicrously sounding order, you know, to have everybody sit down and you feed them, you feed that crowd. 
All right, now he's telling him something else that seems to make no, no earthly sense. Go on across the lake without me. I'll be all right. He knew what he was going to do. He was going to walk across that lake. Um, it's just awesome. Awesome. So the act of faith of the apostles, the act of faith of the apostles is the first hidden thing I wanted to draw out in this gospel passage that I love. Now, the other thing in the Acts of the Apostles, there's something that is just really obvious to me uh, when I think about it. But it's not apparent. It's not obvious when you look at the text. But uh, all these uh, interrogations of Peter and John and then the entire apostles, all the apostles before the Sanhedrin, these these inquiries, these interrogations of Peter and John, all the apostles, and now Stephen, before the Sanhedrin. And all these arguments made in the synagogue, okay? How come no one's mentioning the resurrection? How come they're not uh, making accusations that you all stole the body? Okay, because it didn't happen. And everybody knows that. And it's a mystery. So it's just being left out of the equation, but it is the elephant in the room, folks. Everybody knew where he was buried. The grave of Joseph of Arimathea was right out there. Anybody can go verify. Tomb was empty on Sunday morning. That is a historical fact. The catechism says it's impossible not to acknowledge it as an historical fact. Paragraph 643. Not only the empty tomb, but the resurrection itself. All the compounding, corroborating, interlocking evidence points to it. And here they're not talking about it, and I find that fascinating. In these interrogations by the Sanhedrin, why? Because they know they're the ones that put that guard there and sealed that tomb. Insisted the Pilate do these things, and there were 16 soldiers, at least probably more, at that tomb. There's no way this little band of tradesmen, this little hodgepodge assortment of Jesus' followers who are in a state of total shock and trauma are going to suddenly become SEAL Team 6 and overcome this Roman guard, break that Roman seal, and steal the body. Where's the body? Where is the body? That tomb was empty and no one's talking about it. And I just find that shouts. From the pages of the Acts of the Apostles, it shouts that no one's talking about that. They're not um, because they don't want to deal with it. They don't want to deal with it. They can't deny the facts of the case. And uh, so they're just looking for anything else, pulling out uh, everything out of their bag of tricks here. And basically, you know, saying, bringing, trotting out false witnesses and all these various claims, but behind it all looms large the resurrection. Together let us stand and offer our prayers for Pope Francis. May God continue to give him the courage and strength necessary for effectively leading our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may the promptings of the Holy Spirit guide them in in working to protect the sanctity of human life from conception through natural death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen away from the church, may they hear the Lord's call to return and partake once again of the bread of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who give of their time and talent in this faith community as lectors, music ministers, catechists, and extraordinary ministers of the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may they enjoy eternal bliss in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Jean Zaremba, who is the great aunt of our Director of Religious Education, Maria Centeno. She died at the age of 90 near Boston. She was the third of eight children in a big English and Italian family. In a very special way, I'm offering this Mass for the Repose of her soul. For her, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, please hear and grant these prayers your family has offered to you with confidence and trust. We ask them through your Son, 
Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands, and will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good of all his holy church. <clears throat> may our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you, says the Lord. Alleluia.
<clears throat> spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.